Hi, I'm Laura Delu and this is Claire McDonald and we've asked Claire today to give us some really simple techniques to use when you're jewellery making. So I'm going to choose two strands if that's okay. Absolutely, yeah. This one, fluorite, because I love fluorite, and spinel because it goes with everything. Beautiful. Could you give us two different jewellery designs? Yeah. So if we have a look, the first thing I'd be looking at with the strands is I'd have a think about um, what type of jewellery I want to make. So I'd be looking at the drill hole, so something like that on the hearts, on the fluorite hearts. I'd have a look at that and think that's it's a nice size drill hole, so that's going to be ideal for making a stretchy bracelet. So if we have a look at that one first. So the whole size is really important then? Absolutely, yeah. So Because what we need to think about is our threading material. Okay. Um, so, because we've got our beading thread, our monofilament, and our stretchy elastic. So, I'm going to choose the stretchy elastic. So, I'm just going to condition that a little bit. So, I'm just going to pull, pull the elastic out. I'm going to snip that off. So, I'm going to snip off longer than I'd actually need. It's about, roughly about seven inches or so, depending on the wrist size. But I obviously want to take more, because I don't want them falling off the end. And you can add in uh, different spaces if you want to in between the gemstones, if you want to sort of stretch them out a bit more. Um, but I'm just going to pop them straight on here. I think on the, on the one that's, that's already been done, you can see that it's got some spaces in between it. So if I just take some of these off the strand, and then I can start threading them onto the, the elastic. So like I say, I'm just going to stretch it out just a little bit. And that just, it, it will, as uh, in time, it's going to stretch anyway, but that's sort of just going to help it so that it holds its shape a bit more. So I'm just going to start and thread these on. So you can see there how that's going to go nicely onto the elastic. So I'm going to thread on all of the beads, all of the hearts that I need. So this is probably one of the simplest things you can do, isn't it, really? Absolutely. It's, it's one of the best, best looks of jewellery, but simple techniques. I think it's the knot that sometimes phases people. It's often, often the way, because, you, because it's just a knot that's going to hold everything together, so you just need to make sure that it's, it's quite secure. So I've threaded all of the hearts onto the elastic, and I've just done it in sort of like quite a random, random fashion. So what, I'm, what I need to do now is I'm going to tie a knot, but I'm going to add in... I don't have to do this, but I'm going to add in a spacer bead just at the end. So I'm just going to pop that through. So I'm going to thread that onto the, the elastic as well, all the way through. And if you've got a spacer bead like that, that's really great because something like that, you could hide the knot within the spacer bead. So that's the last one that I'm going to have, have on. So I'm going to start and tie my knot now. So I'm crossing over. And I go all the way through and just tie an ordinary overhand knot. I'm going to pull it so it's quite taut. And I go in again and tie another overhand knot. And then I go back in again. So I'm going to go through and back through again. So now what I will need to do is I'm just going to pull it so that it's really taut from all sides of the elastic. So the two that are in my hand and the two that are on the thread, and just pull that nice and tight. So what you can do now with that is you can add a little bit of, uh, if you wanted to add glue or your clear nail varnish, leave that to dry, so stretch it out. You can pop it onto if you've got a bracelet holder or round a cup or anything like that, just so that it exposes the knot and it doesn't stick to the bead, and then you can snip the ends so they're nice and neat and then that little knot will get hidden into the space bead there or if the hole is big enough into the the gem itself so that would be your stretchy bracelets that's the easiest piece of jewelry really to make so if we move on to the next strand that you've picked so we've got so we've got sort of like a higher end strand here so chances are that the drill holes will be smaller with this so this is where we would use slightly different findings so if we have a look, and I'm just going to do sort of a graduate, it's a graduated strand. So I'm going to pick out, so I'm going to go from like the smaller to larger. I'm going to make some earrings. So I'm going to just take, I'm going to take three. And pop those there. 
So I can either take the three that are the first ones off the strand, or I could, if I wanted to, go into the middle and take a much larger. But we'll have those three there. So I'm going to look at my findings, and because the drill hole is a little bit smaller, I'm going to take my smaller, lightweight head pin. So I'm just going to pop that on, and I'll pop the larger one at the bottom. I'm going to take the next one, the next size up, and pop that on. So I'm going to have a slightly graduated size coming down on, on the earring. So now I'm going to take my pliers. So I've got my round nose pliers because I want to make a loop. I'm going to pop that just so that it's sitting on top of the, on top of the gemstone. And I've come sort of about, coming up to about a third of the way down my pliers. I'm going to move the head pin out, move my pliers around and mould that all the way around. So it's going to take on the form, the rounded edge of the pliers. So I'm going to take my pliers out, pop it back in, and bring what's left of the head pin all the way around. So I've now formed a loop. I'm going to pop the head pin back in, and I'm just going to do a wrap loop now. So I'm taking that wrap all the way down so that it's in contact now with the gem at the top. So I'm going to just go in with my cutters now and snip off. And if I've got a little bit of an edge that's sticking out at the top, I can just go in with my chain nose pliers and just nip that in. So we've now got part of, the, part of our earring. So all we need to do now is use our shepherd hook findings that can go into our ear. So I'm just going to take, again, so I've got my chain nose pliers because I want nice grip. I'm going to open up the loop at the bottom. So I'm going to open this up like a gate. So I'm going to just lift up and pop the closed loop on and then close up. So you've now got your earring. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. So that is two simple, straightforward ways of making some incredible pieces of jewellery.